So welcome to this JBA broadcast and today we are going to hear from Murray Dale and John Bevington, both technical directors at JBA and they're going to share their thoughts with us on surface water flood forecasting and what we're doing about it at JBA. What is surface water flooding and why does it matter? In one sense, flooding is simple. It rains hard or the sea comes up and flooding happens. But the mechanisms of flooding can be quite complex and there are different types of flooding where the causes and processes can be subtly different. Surface water flooding occurs following heavy rainfall when that rainfall cannot be conveyed adequately by a drainage system or on the ground. It often occurs before the water reaches the river, so is distinct from river flooding. Very often, surface water flooding occurs in urban areas where the ground surface is tarmacked or paved, meaning the rainfall cannot soak into the ground. It can happen near large scale infrastructure where nearby drainage becomes overwhelmed by the flow of water. Because surface water flooding follows the most intense rain, it can often occur in the warmer months of May to September in the UK, responding to convective processes in the atmosphere. But increasingly, there is evidence of convection occurring in all months of the year. Climate change is exacerbating the problem, and we are working with the Met Office and Newcastle University to provide estimated rainfall as intensity changes for future decades. Surface water flooding matters because it causes damage, disruption and can cost lives. An analysis using JBA's flood maps has estimated that nearly 5 million UK properties are at risk of flooding from surface water. The most damaging floods the UK has experienced occurred in the summer of 2007. Two thirds of the flooding that summer was the result of surface water, not from rivers or the sea. It is also occurring regularly. Every year there are reports of surface water flooding in our towns, cities and across UK infrastructure. Why is surface water flooding hard to forecast? Flood forecasting has been around for a long time in the UK. Using computer models, we can forecast the timing and magnitude of flood flows from rivers and flood effects from the sea with reasonably good accuracy. These models get updated in the lead up to a flood so that the accuracy can improve as we get closer to the event. Surface water flooding, however, has two distinct challenges. Firstly, it relies very heavily on the accuracy of the rainfall forecast. And secondly, the time between the rain falling and flooding occurring is very short, minutes in some cases. Compounding this, the type of rainfall that needs to be forecast is the most difficult to forecast. While forecasts that show when and where rainfall will occur have improved and can be very accurate, Forecasting the high intensities needed to produce surface water flooding remains an acute challenge. Fortunately, the UK is at the forefront of this technology and we now have highly sophisticated weather models able to capture very high intensities of rainfall. But to do so, we need to use a process called ensemble forecasting. This means that instead of running one forecast, meteorological agencies run multiple forecasts at one time aiming to capture the possible range of what might happen. This then gives you a probability, a chance of getting those very high intensities in an area. Because of the extremely complex processes in the atmosphere, we're still some way off being able to say there will be one inch of rain in one hour in Birmingham tomorrow, for example. But what the latest ensemble predictions allow is being able to give an estimate of the likelihood of such an event. What are we doing about it? For many years now, we've had computer models that can simulate where surface water will go when it rains a certain amount over a certain area. These have street level and even street curb level accuracy. So in theory, we can use the rainfall forecast as an input and show in good time ahead of an event exactly where the flooding will occur. However, street level accuracy is not possible with the forecast of convective rainfall. Once a rainfall event has started, yes, we can see where the rain, where the event is and weather radar can be very useful in doing this. 
understanding an evolving situation can be very important for planning the response to flood events. But to take effective mitigating action before the event starts, you ideally need at least six hours warning. This is where new state-of-the-art rainfall forecasting technology can help. Using an ensemble prediction system that I mentioned earlier, we can identify the likelihood or probability of getting the high intensities of rainfall that cause the flooding occurring in the next 24 hours or so. This gives responders much more time to take preventative action. Experiments we have run show how a system would have worked for historic surface water flood events in urban areas. These experiments use local mapping showing known areas of vulnerability to surface water flooding and a live estimated flood extent with differing levels of probability. This technology can work directly from the rainfall forecast, allowing responders to see areas that might be affected well ahead of the event. They can then take informed decisions on what action would be valuable to prevent potential flood impacts. John is now going to tell you about prototype work we have been doing for Network Rail. As part of a UK Department for Transport funded project and working with Innovate UK and Network Rail, we have developed and are testing a prototype system that provides asset based alerts of intense rainfall and surface water across the UK. We are building on our river flood forecasting system, Flood Foresight, which is already being used by insurers, NGOs and local authorities to forecast flood impacts ahead of them occurring. For surface water forecasting, we're using the ensemble prediction systems, both from the Met Office and Met Erin, the Irish Met Service. These provide us with high resolution rainfall probabilities at around two to two and a half kilometers resolution. Working with our clients, we are then able to use their asset data sets to identify those assets at risk of heavy intense rainfall. We are taking this one step further also by coupling the rainfall data with pre-computed maps that show surface water flood hazard. And we pre-compute these maps using thousands of 2D hydrological model simulations based on historic rainfall. These are the same maps that you would see in your conveyancing search report when you buy a house or those that are published by the Environment Agency, for example, in England. Our new automatic processes within Flood Foresight are now able to estimate where imminent surface water flood risk is highest around assets and provide us with maps and alerts with probabilities of flooding up to two to five days ahead, depending on the model used. We can adapt this approach to any form of asset, whether linear features for rail or road assets, to a national portfolio of insured policies or across a local authority area. We are testing how our clients could use these data to put in place certain actions that can take place ahead of the event. For instance, clearance of gullies and drains will increase the capacity of the drainage network to cope with an imminent downpour, thereby reducing the impact of the event. Murray is going to now describe some more of the challenges in defining what actions can be taken around these forecasts. How can users take action on low probability alerts? As John and I have mentioned, what our technology allows, making use of ensemble rainfall forecasts, is live maps that show a probability or chance of surface water flooding in any location of interest. A challenge that this technology presents is that the probabilities are often low. When we've tested this technology on historic surface water flood events, we can see that the forecasts do align with the actual areas that experienced flooding, but that the forecast probabilities might be 10 or 20%, for example. So for a responder, what action might you be prepared to take on a 10 or 20% probability of flooding forecast? Well, research has shown that responders still find low probability alerts useful and can take mitigating actions. Sometimes these might be what we call low regrets actions. 
things that have some benefit but are not too costly or disruptive. Such actions can include mobilising response staff, carrying out clearance at known pinch points or flood hotspots, or for infrastructure owners, initiating operational measures to offset possible impacts the next day or some hours ahead. While responders might like a forecast that says this location will flood tomorrow due to intense rainfall, we do remain at the mercy of the atmosphere and its unpredictability. But with probabilistic forecasts, we have an opportunity to make better decisions and be as informed as possible. Where could this go in the future? We're engaged with users and testers across the transport, utilities, insurance and humanitarian sectors in the UK as well as internationally. Although they have interest in forecasting impacts from river floods, I often hear mentioned that consistent and localised forecasts of surface water flooding are the holy grail for these users. As we've mentioned in this discussion, surface water is harder to forecast, the uncertainties in the forecasts are often greater, and the lead times are typically shorter. Ensemble prediction systems are improving, and the data from these are becoming available to companies like JBA to use in innovative ways to customise forecasting and impact analysis for our clients. We also collaborate a lot with the international development organisations working in low to middle income countries who also face significant issues around surface water flooding. And this typically affects dense urban areas or unplanned settlements with poor drainage and little in the way of natural protection to slow runoff. Being able to provide forecasts in these circumstances is really interesting to us. At JBA, we, we have surface water flood maps already for every country. But the tricky part for us is, is finding suitable ensemble prediction systems like we have in the UK at a high enough resolution to identify convective events. Rainfall radar is mooted as an option and it is available in some cities, but we're interested in how other data sets might help fill this gap to provide longer lead times and forecasts. These would open up possibilities for anticipatory action, such as humanitarian forecast based financing or parametric insurance that contribute to increasing the resilience of these communities. Well, thank you uh, so much for that, John and Murray. Um, we would love to hear from you if you have any questions arising from today's broadcast. Perhaps you have a need for systems that provide forecast or real time rainfall or flood information. Maybe you have data or models that you think would improve decision making around flooding or simply if you'd like some more information or a demo of our tools, models and data. Our contact details are up there on the screen, so please do get in touch. Thanks for listening.